And good morning, and welcome to one of the first ever World College Poker webinars. I'm Alec Rome, and along with me today, one of the founders of World College Poker, Craig Tapscott. And of course, you know the person in the bottom part of the screen, one of the most famous poker players in the world. I can hype him up, right? just up to the mountains, uh, over 13 million in live earnings, and the founder of the Flop app, one of the reasons why he's here today, Patrick Antonius. Patrick, how are you uh, this evening? It's it's seven hours ahead of me and nine hours ahead of Craig. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you guys? Good, good. We're we're great. I mean, yeah. we're we're excited to have you. I mean, we're we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff today. Um, you know, first off, you're one of the 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 sponsors of, of World College Poker, a, a brand new sort of promotion and and product coming into the poker world. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, I guess. Um, you know, what excites you about something like a World College Poker? It, it's basically going to be a lot of college students competing against each other. Um, what do you, what excites you about something like this coming up in, in the poker scene? Well, what, ex what excites me, um, it's something new, which is very nice. We haven't, um, we haven't had any, anything like this for the poker industry. Um, it's something, it's obviously all, all young players, just players who are just learning and getting better. And, and uh, these are the players that they're going to actually make the biggest impact in our game, in our industry, all the, all the new generation. They're always going to come and change a little bit things and uh, change the way the game's played. And, and uh, it's, it's important um, they're, they're going to make an impact this way the the which direction the poker industry is, is going and uh, we have amazing game and it's it's uh it's very important this uh, direction we're gonna go from here so patrick when did you start playing did you play before college yeah actually i i have played uh i played professionally 20 years for for now and um, my first experience is experiences with uh, poker was actually when i was like 11. wow my we played like really i mean it was just sense dance and but we liked the game it was not about the money but already then i got introduced it and then um then i started to play a bit more when i was 14 15 16 uh while i was doing a lot of sports playing tennis and um, we played between the practices and 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 that so i I've uh, I've been long time in this in this involved with poker. So what do you think has has changed over your time uh, being in poker? Um, what do, what do you think is the biggest thing that you look back on and you're like, wow? I mean, we are so far away from where I started um, in this game. Uh, what has changed the most uh, with the game is the, obviously the this game grew massively. The popularity is is is, um, is really something that nobody believed. I think back in the days like this, there's about hundred million players, hundred million people around the world are playing poker. It's it's a massive number, and uh, and um, obviously uh, technology has changed the game, the way the game is played now on the higher level more because we are learned all of us learned a little bit more and uh, technology helped us and is helping us uh, find better solutions in the in the game uh, but it's it's been a it's been a very um i would say very fascinating life to be part of uh, part of the poker industry and playing playing already professionally when really there was nothing else than like a world series of poker main event that was was something something that got more attention and and um i did not even know that there was poker on tv or it was it was any kind of game that you could you could actually play professionally and travel around the world when i when i started to play so it was right but yeah being being part of all the booms and um, and in these events go from just just a small amount of players to thousands of players is it's uh, it's amazing. 
Well, when you say technology, that's part of why you're developing the Flop app, the first land of poker. Why don't you share a little bit more about everything that that app, uh, your vision for that app in a couple of months for all the players? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically, um, uh, we started First Land of Poker uh, almost three years ago. And um, the reason was that um, uh, I realized there's no, there was no modern technology helping us solve certain problems like we had a we had and we have still a clear communication problem uh, between uh, between the poker operators, between the poker rooms, between the players, um, and um, and this this was something that that uh, um, we're facing. Like players are just having a hard time finding players to play with exactly the same. Game, same games that they have interest in the certain locations, like we're all scattered and we, you know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, to see what's going on and, and find the right game for you and, and make, that, make that easy as possible um, will, will be amazing. Um, amazing. So this was actually, uh, this was actually the... Um, there's something that I was I struggled myself my whole poker career a lot to get into right. the in the into the games around the world and and um, and and all of us have have done and and uh, then then I was looking more into um, the in our whole industry and we don't actually have a exclusive platform for the community in poker community where we can all connect like all the players, operators, rooms, like we don't have, you know, we have, uh, this is the first, first land of poker is the first social media application and platform where we can all, all improve our industry and, and get closer to each others. So, um, hopefully we can, we can deliver and we can, um, we can help, help the community, poker community to to go to the better direction and and uh, we are here to serve everyone players and and right. all the all the everyone who cares about the poker community well i see that you're already uh ta having tips on the app uh, i'm using the app i think alec is using the app so you're doing right. some some professional players are sharing besides yourself right you you're sharing some information some some tips to the players so how's that going to evolve yeah, I mean, we're just. Um, I'm. I'm writing all these. Uh, all these little tips, and they're like uh, very um, general tips that is like. I don't go to very de technical details, but there's something that they're they're gonna help anyone pretty much um, to 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 take to take make better decisions and and. You know, there's there's just so many things that goes into the poker. It's not just the uh, technically playing playing good. There's there's all the other 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 things. You're managing yourself. You're deciding de deciding what to play and when to quit, and and all these things like all the preparation you do before you play. Like it's important. I I treat poker as a as a as a, any sport, and I think this is uh, this is part of the reason why I had such a such a good career that I always um, um, was. I've been always acting like an athlete, sleeping good, exercising well, and, and playing when I'm feeling good instead of instead of playing long hours when I'm sick and and tired. And uh, right. and it's I mean it's it's a it's a it's a sport of the brain and. And the brain uh, needs to work when you play. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was excited when, we, when you first told me about the Flop app and what the project I've been working on for World College Poker for uh, about six or seven months. And uh, I saw it as a, Alec can probably talk more about it too. I saw it as creating a community where all these college players and there's probably many, many college clubs around the U.S. and the world that they can communicate and share information, share about the game, share hands, things like that. So that was one of the most exciting parts of beginning to work with Flop. 
for us as we expanded our um, our audience for the college players. I mean, Alec, have you, you've talked to a few players about it. I know you played last night. Yeah, that's right. We uh, we just we just played last night. I had a little little home game and and essentially just talked about the app and kind of uh, what I think really excited me was the, the possibilities of the app, um, the the possibility of, of taking all of these different places where we are. We're in. You, there's so many places where poker communities organize. It's 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 unorganized in a way. And you're absolutely right. We don't have a central place to come together and be able to communicate with people. I mean, like Patrick, like where you know we could just reach out to people um, and and not make it feel like such a a hard thing to reach out. You know, um, to not make it feel so distant. Um, and especially in the time now, when you think about it. Um, you know, we've had the, the global pandemic going on. I mean, we all feel more distant in a way. Um, so so stuff like this, particularly for our community that is very interconnected and, you know, everybody knows everybody and everybody plays with each other and, and all that sort of thing. I think it, it can only be a benefit. And I, I'm excited to, to see, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask Patrick was, I know you were talking about tips, but you were talking to us the other day, too, about um, kind of reaching out to, to new players and, and making – um, you know, GTO solutions. Everybody hears that that three letter acronym GTO, and they're like, "Ooh, fancy." Um, but but how do you how do you make it simpler to digest? And, and what are some of your plans for that? Yeah, this is interesting question. So the people who don't understand, who don't know about GTO, so it's um, it's a game theory optimal, which is um, basically being being solved by artificial intelligence. So the the computer is giving you uh, the most optimal recommendation to every situation uh, in general. But we are all humans and we all, nobody's computer, we play differently. So this is just a suggestion that, that what, is, what, is, um, what is right uh, general in those situations. So, so the GTO, um, this has actually changed the game. The game's been played. Quite a bit. People are applying it for playing preflop, and um, there's there's all kind of tools now that you can use. And um, this is actually actually you have to be a little bit advanced in poker to understand how to use these tools and learn from them. And we are building at the moment um, a new kind of GTO tool that would would be very easy and simple for the very beginners to start using right away and this is this is something something interesting uh, that that we are doing and uh, and also um, yeah poker is I think we lost Craig. oh my gosh we lost Craig uh, yeah. <laughs> Craig must have had a so uh, go ahead go ahead so yeah so we we're building uh, we're gonna have coupled of these tools for players to use and, and play with them and learn and we also um, we also gonna teach poker I'll be part of teaching and uh, with our application uh, first land of poker we're gonna have a part for all the all the teachers who are providing content and um, they can they can they can provide their content and the players will find a lot of teachers because uh, there's really you know there's no right and wrong way to learn and everyone will learn differently based on different teacher and and you can choose you can choose based on um, who's teaching really technical who's teaching more generic generic mm-hmm. um, and um, yeah it's it's um, all these all this uh, getting 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 the information sharing sharing people learn so much from each other's players when they're sharing and they're talking about hands and commenting, commenting uh, why they should do this and that. This is really something that is is very needed when you're just getting into poker and or you're learning yourself. It's really really helps you to take your game fast on the on better levels instead of instead of you trying to figure out everything yourself and just playing and reading and learning but communicating with with other players is is really important um, in the in the early years 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, one of the things I hear uh, all the time is that, you know, you I, I feel like your growth in the game, um, it gets kind of, you, you hit a plateau unless you find other people to communicate with. And, you know, having mentors and teachers in all aspects of life um, in any industry that you're in is really important. Did you have a, a mentor or a teacher that, that really um, guided you um, in the game? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. There's actually uh, some of these players, they have like a mental coaches and life coaches nowadays to mm. and kind of improve their part of this. Uh, I had a very special uh, career myself. I actually, I've done, I've done everything by myself. I, I've done it in the unconventional way that I, I never had anyone to teach about poker. I always just figured it out myself. I was, I played a lot. I probably probably played more than, I would say more than anyone in the between the years like two thousand to two thousand six. Like those six years, I was, I was really playing twelve hours a day, maybe averagely. Uh, so, um. So yeah, but also in this, uh, we didn't have this kind of community that those days. Like there were not so many players, and it was it was very different. It, there was no no really good books to read. I never read one one poker book. Nothing, nothing. Uh, nobody. We were all just start, trying to figure it out how what is the most optimal way to play play the game. Um, but uh, but yeah, that. That being said, there's there's all kind of information online, and it says that I some, somebody has been my mentor or coach <laughs> or something. It's it, I would say that if anyone it actually was bothering me, if somebody was trying to tell me ever something something about certain hands, how I should play or what I should do or something, uh, some kind of putting things to my head, it would uh, it would hurt me in the way because. Yeah. I like to think of everything myself and come with my solutions and then I apply them when I when I'm in the moment. Mm -hmm. But if you go to in the moment you go uh to the moment when when uh someone is telling you that oh you should do this in this situation most likely and you're in that situation and and uh it's it's not like um uh it, a good way to think uh, to uh, you know to get influenced by others in, in that way you gotta you gotta always do the do the work yourself but to get that information when you want it from others and we know when you have questions and you want the, want the information this is very valuable but if some put some information on you uh, how to play ace king you know no this is the right way to play and you do this and that and and uh, this is not the not the good way. Right. It's better if you kind of seek it out yourself because you know what what's best for you. You know what you're looking for rather than well, you know somebody that just gives you some random advice like that. You know they're not really they're not really tailoring it to what you need. You know. Um, I, another thing, I, I guess, you know, we on this point, what do you think takes a player from a decent player, a good player? to a really great player what is there something special or is it is it something is a much simpler answer than that my answer is going to be pretty simple it's it's just my opinion that i i think there's two factors uh, one uh is your motivation that mm -hmm. you need to have that motivation that you know you need to want to be a uh, great player you want to you want to kind of want it so much and do the sacrifices instead of uh, dreaming about it um, so you gotta believe in yourself um, that's so that's one thing and then it's um, there is a talent part also but also when it comes to this motivation is that then you will you need to be willing to work really hard like it's if anything uh, it's like any sport you know, there's a reason why the best players are there. They're the ones who've been practicing the most. They're the ones wanting it the most. Like, uh, like it's always 
they're always the hard, most hardworking guys. It might look outside that these guys are just so talented and lucky that they don't have to have to work. They're they're the ones usually who did the most most hard work. Uh, so so these are these are the things. Uh, it's it's um, um, of confidence to play on the highest levels, like to become a great player and great results. Mm, this is important in poker, so you you need to you need to have that. Um, but usually the confidence comes with the with the fact that you know your skill level, you're honest with yourself, and you know you know exactly how how you. Then then it's another thing that you you have the confidence to perform. No, those are those are all really good points for sure. Uh, I yeah. I keep. You know, one of the things that I hear just whenever I talk to somebody about poker is all of the skills that seem to apply to different aspects of life, business, um, different, you know, psychology, all of those sort of things. There might be people that or, or college students in particular that watch this webinar or, for, you know, they see something for poker for the first time and they don't know how it might help them. They, they just view it maybe as, as just a, a game, just, you know, degenerate gambling. But how can poker help somebody improve their life? Uh, and, and why would you recommend it? Well, you learn, you learn a lot. With, um, you can learn a lot from poker. You can, you can learn a lot um, about yourself because every time you play you win or lose and and this, for some people this might be something new if they haven't been competing in anything before so you learn to have emotions when you you're losing um uh, you need to be less uh, you learn to be less um result oriented because it's it's not it's not always the case that that uh, the results tell you how good you've been playing. There's a, there's a, just a perfect amount of luck in in poker, and this is actually uh, such amazing game. That's, I mean, poker is. I couldn't appreciate more uh, poker as a game. Like we have the we have the only game that has. You need to apply very good strategy there's a psychology involved with poker um we have live re live tells in uh in there's a perfect amount of luck factor that it's anyone can anyone a good day any given day and beat all the best players but it's just the perfect one it's still a game of skill and I cannot say any game that that will bring people together to play a smart game where you have to play a, a good strategy and perform it well at the moment. Have a, be present and know what's going on and make make quick decisions under a lot of pressure sometimes when it can cost you a full tournament life or 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 like this. So you gotta be to anything you can be facing a lot of different stages of of tournaments when it's sometimes really low and and quiet it can be the most in moments with the biggest parts and in the in the biggest tournaments. and it's it's um a lot it will teach you a lot about human behavior mm -hmm. and 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 also uh, uh, all the recognition, re recognition that how fast. Basically, the one of the one of the important poker skills is that how fast will you to uh, take all the information that you are giving from your opponent. You're watching your opponent play, and you see how many hands he's playing and how he's playing them, and then you make conclusions. You take that information and you apply it against him. So it's all about making right decisions, and you need to you need to find solutions in real time against your opponent that you're maybe just playing first time in in your life now. After ten, you have a certain kind of 
opinion of this player and how do I play against this kind of player. So it's it's really um, it's really the most amazing game in 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 this way. That's right, and it's why we all love it. We're we're happy to have Craig back on the call. We we <laughs> lost him for a moment, Disappeared. but he, he's back. But yes, I mean, I I think that's the reason why I got into it. I mean, I've started from the age of just five years old. I I used to play with my stuffed animals in the living room, and uh, I have no clue how it happened. <laughs> But, uh, did you lose? Did yeah, you lose? I, I can't remember. You know, puppy. Puppy was a tough, tough little stuffed animal. I'll tell you that. He, I didn't want puppy on my left. That's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's just it's been a part of my life ever since then. You know, whether it's playing a video game or anything like that. But it really, um, when I got to to college, it it really. Uh, help me create a community and make new friends and and it helped me make better decisions and pay attention to people you're absolutely right i mean the psychology behind people and and what they're doing how they look when they're doing something uh doesn't just apply at the poker table when you're trying to win uh you know prizes money etc uh it also applies in being emotionally intelligent you know being able to, to handle a high pressure negotiation uh, for your next job, you're trying to get a higher salary and you got to negotiate and look somebody in the face and see whether or not they're willing to give it to you or not. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, I, I think something like world college poker is for any college student out there that doesn't think this could help them. I, I implore them to try poker out, to try world college poker, uh, as an outlet to, to learn some of these skills that Patrick just mentioned, Craig. Well, um, when I was talking to uh, another top player in the industry a few days ago, uh, they talked I about Pat. Right now. Can you hear me? Has no mic on, no? I, I can hear him on mine. Can you hear me okay? Let's hear Greg. I don't know can what I hear? need to do. Can you to, hear me? To change that. I'm not sure, yeah, because uh, I hear him okay on my end. I'm not huh. sure if I can feed you the audio or not, but... Hmm, that's interesting. I, I can you hear me okay, Patrick? Be silent for me. I cannot hear. Oh, what okay. I'll, I'll try what some. I'll try something real quick here. I'm gonna try something. Let's see. Go ahead and speak now, Craig. Patrick, are you there? Is he still quiet for you? Patrick is quiet for me now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe you, I. What do I have to press? I say you should. I I don't know if you really have to press anything. It's kind of weird because I've got. I hear all of you. I hear both of you. Well, go ahead, Is Alex. It, <laughs> just restart the call or no? No, keep going. Go ahead, Alex. No, it's okay. We'll yeah, we'll we'll try to keep going here. You know. Can you did? Can you talk to Alec about? Can you talk to Patrick about COVID and how it's affected him playing yeah, and flying? I was going to mention that. Yeah. Um. So so Craig in my ear, producer in my ear now. Um, the pandemic and COVID nineteen, uh, definitely has has given us a new outlook on this game because now a game that, as you know, I know you really love to play live. Uh, but that that became a little yeah. a little tougher um, when when the pandemic happened. Um, what did you learn throughout this pandemic? And you know, what have you learned maybe from uh, potentially having to play online a little more than than normal? The pandemic, like most, is really good for online poker. Everybody moved online for temporary, <laughs> at least. Uh, so yeah, I I entertained myself for playing online also when uh, when there was nothing where I could go, I where I am, and uh, also it 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 gave me an option to a little bit game more mm -hmm. to study study a little bit um, using using these new tools that that we have available nowadays. Um, I have to say, it's nice to see that online online poker is is having a second big boom, and uh, it's it, there's we had a lot of a lot of nice big tournaments this year, this yeah. year. But um, I assume when things go back to normal, that people really want to play live and choose live poker poker more. And I think, yeah, the even, even 
Yeah, maybe there is more more players actually. I think they started to play poker because of this um, pandemic when they had more time to go online and uh, seek like a new new thing to learn or new study new things or take a new hobby. Mm. And um, but yeah, it's it's nice to see. I mean, now we we see those massive that are are in the poker. What do we have? How players we have in the world there's uh, you can see the real numbers how how many thousands of players we get on these tournaments on daily basis right right yeah these tournaments are are huge and you know across so many platforms and we can only think that it's going to keep growing and you know potentially there might be the open of course we all know about you know being in the u.s uh you know, being in the middle of Nebraska, it's it's a little hard to just you know. There's not really uh, the legislation yet, but I think there's definitely the the opening for a second poker boom that could be. We're on the start of the wave. You know, never know in the next ten years. Craig, yeah, well, Patrick has well, Patrick has started his own live poker tour. Ask him about that. Oh yeah, that's right. What Craig tells me, you started your own live poker tour. What's your aspirations for that? Well, it was just an event that we did uh, with First Land of Poker. We had a, we wanted to try some new things um, to to improve the live poker poker tournaments and uh, in the industry. So, so we launched a Bat- Patrick Antonio's Poker Challenge tour, and uh, and we tried new things like a faster shot clock in our events and. We had players around the world, everywhere from USA, from Asia, from India, to play, and it was a, it was a very nice event. So it's not really it's it's more like the plan is to have a my own tour mm-hmm. going around or or, or something. It, it's something more that you know once in a while do a fun event and invite a lot of players and maybe try something new to and. Then, if things work like this, faster shot clock was a very big success, and I think this is the future of poker that we're gonna apply this faster version to the shot clock. What players are using, twenty or thirty second shot clocks. Uh, there's a there's a faster and more more entertaining way to play play poker that we all can adjust. And uh, but it was a really fun event, successful one. And um, I'm looking forward to do another one at some point. But uh, there's no tour coming. That's that's not oh. that's not the plan. But <laughs> but the plan is actually to do a couple um, just fun events. Came cast game tour events. We have a uh, first land of poker has our own uh, cast game tour. So uh, we are nice. uh, we always. Are to like uh, doing a nice, nice two, three, three day event somewhere, or even a one week is possible. Um, right. To get some good, get players together to play, invite, invite new players to the game, um, have good time, play, play cash games, uh, and enjoy the life in this way. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, poker is really. I talk about it in a competitive way and in the very on the highest level of poker, but I mean it is that it's supposed to be the most entertaining and fun time to spend your spare time and relax. Like this is what I do myself most of the time when I get together with my friends here here in South France, Monaco, and it's just the nicest thing. We play some play some poker and watch some sports and we socialize and you know it's uh, I love the game. I love the social part of it, and and uh, and in in the USA, actually, uh, this is you are you are having it in the right way. Poker right. is done in the right way in the states, and uh, Europe is coming far behind of that kind of poker culture. The culture is really nice in the, in the states. How people feel like they're in, the, in their own living room and they're right. watching sports and playing and and eating and a little bit of everything a little bit of everything at one time Uh, i wanted to ask poker but everybody definitely should have a right to uh play online poker it's uh it's crazy that it's our it should be available for everyone right every in it's it's kind of well it's kind of 
ridiculous that you don't have a right to play online poker if you choose if you chose to yeah it's uh, agreed yeah definitely agreed for you for there craig's feeding me another question in my ear no i was saying pa patrick is part of a new wave of young players that really focus on physical fitness mm -hmm. so uh he was one of the like when i started interviewing players over the last 10 years him and a number of other players really you know use that as a way to uh, improve their poker game can you talk to him about that are you still not hearing him i got the question but i was seeing if you can't hear him now yeah, yeah t let, tell me. All right, huh. So uh, the thing that he mentioned that I thought of was that you're, you you mentioned earlier that as as part of your overall like poker philosophy that you take care of your body and, and you really, uh, you know, you work out, you, t you eat right. Um, how important is that to uh, being able to play poker at the highest level? I think it helps a lot tremendously and uh, I was very lucky that I was um, very active when I was young. I was playing a lot of different sports. I tried to play tennis professionally and uh, and that's I really learned at a young age that you know you need to put the work in and you need to practice makes you so much better. Nothing comes nothing comes without a hard work and but um, but so yeah. Then I've been I've been always living like an athlete. I've been always training. I've been I've been always sleeping well. I I've been eating, I would say good nutrition. It's just uh, doing all these all, all these kind of things. They have come very naturally for me. And um, now there's a lot of science that has backing up like how important is sleep to your brain functioning. How important is nutrition for your brain functioning? How much exercise help your brain functioning? Like all these, all how we create more neurons in the, in the brain and how all these things that are what I've been always doing a lot and doing well, they, they're actually very important for the brain. For the brain, this has, um, has helped me, uh, helped me to perform on I, I've been able to, um, um, so yeah, it's, it, it is, it is important, but, uh, also poker is, is, you know, you don't need the physical abilities for this game. It, it's, it's on a higher level you go. I think, I think, uh, players are, are doing all these things pretty, pretty, uh, well nowadays you can see that the best players there, there are doing yoga they're doing meditation they're doing yeah. breathing exercise they're they're making sure that you, they get enough sleep when they play a big tournament they're eating they're doing all these things properly nowadays already their treating is a, a, like a sport right i mean poker can be an equalizer where you may not need athletic ability but you can still find an edge because you still have to take care of your brain and take care of your body um and you know, maybe not do 24-hour sessions online or anything like that. Get some sleep and, and come restarted for the next day. Um, I had a couple of questions from some of our players that uh, they were interested in asking you, and this one comes from Sid. Uh, he asked about what was the biggest downswing you've ever had, and how did you recover from it? Yeah, I had a big downswing. Um, I still remember the months that it happened. It was... Um, it was um, this down happened two thousand and and eight. It was the months of January and February. Mm -hmm. January, February, a little bit maybe March on two thousand and eight, and I I lost over four million straight, and that was maybe four point two million. I. I didn't keep the exact track, but it was <laughs> it was a long it was the longest downswing I've ever had of a couple of months, um, two and a half months, and it was, the gains were very massively big, and uh, and uh, I was I was in the states, and then I I flew to Europe and I spent the next next three months I was in in South France and in Monaco and a little bit in Spain and and run and i was really lucky actually to recover um quickly it took it took me those three months to get it all back so i had a i had the opposite opposite really run and um mm. this is one of the things uh yeah it's it, 
how fast you can recover and um I, I was I was very lucky there that I got I got good run of cards because yeah it was it was it was the struggle that I faced so far in with my poker career how to handle that kind of that kind of uh, bad run of cards and I was also used to um, just just recently like I had uh, I was. I had the cra- one of the craziest streaks that anyone has probably had. Like I played, I played more than four years between 2003 and 2006 without having a losing month. Huh. And for it, it's it was just, and I was playing the biggest games online that there were. So I was playing against the best players, and for four years, not having a losing month, I I was running really good and and playing really good, but. Also, I was playing so much that my one month of playing was could have someone playing two, three years live yeah. in some cases. So, in this way, it was extremely hard for me to have a longer losing period because it was so many hands, so many hands in those those days. Um, <laughs> that was my biggest biggest losing streak. Uh, for four million years. Uh, so, was there something that you told yourself that that got you through that, or was it simply just going back to work and and hoping for better? I just remember I had to change some things and I had to take a little break. I was in Vegas and I felt like you know it's good. I'm leaving to Europe and uh, I went to Spain to look at some houses and play some golf and trip then I a little bit and booked my first winning day for a while and yeah. and uh, it followed with another winning day and and uh, things just started to started to get better from there but uh, but it's really um, I I mean obviously I played 20 years professionally already I've seen so many down swings and you of handling those situations of what do you need to do and even if you know sometimes that you're in a good mindset and ready to play again you're many times not. it all depends of how how bad is your swing it's it's hurting you because you've seen so many losing hands if you have thought that you want to get fast back to where you were to recover the money you've lost that's already a bad mindset you need to be yeah. just fine with it is your situation right now and you are in the present moment and you're focusing what's happening right now and you don't think about what happened in the past and and what you want for the future like this is this is very important in in poker it's so important to be present otherwise you you know you're not playing your best uh so yeah this um uh, obviously Obviously, there were a lot of emotions, like when I was losing in in Vegas on this downswing, and and uh, all I can do is I can say that I always tried my best. I did not, for sure, I did not play my best while I was losing almost everything. And, and gains were so massive. I mean, there were. I remember there were days I was up over three hundred thousand. So many days I was up over three hundred thousand. I ended up losing those days. On the during this downswing, I end up losing two hundred thousand or one hundred or even even more, and and um, I was not managing myself um, properly those days. Those days, and uh, you learn as you go. The right thing that I should have even I should have just booked a small winning session the days I was winning, and that would get me in a better mindset, have a better next day, be prepared better. You know, go from instead of um, instead of <laughs> giving it a, it a chance to right yeah this kind of this kind of streak right build on the little wins essentially yeah I, I get get what you're saying there I have another question too um, from one of our, our players this one comes from uh, Rad uh, he asks and this is a t- you know this question it's like asking what your favorite child I guess in the game what's your preferred game? What's your preferred game? Does No Limit Hold'em have your heart 
Is it PLO? Uh, what is what is your preferred game that you like to play? My preferred uh, tournament game is No Limit Hold'em. Um, this is this is real. This game fits the best for the for the tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, and my preferred cash game cash game is uh, is Pot Limit Omaha. And now five card Pot Limit Omaha, but uh, oh, yeah. Pot Limit Omaha, Omaha for the cash game because um, you can just you can play more. And uh, it just—you don't have to be like um, much attention pre-flop than you have to do in no limit hold'em. And but it's it's more about action. You can you can play more hands, and this is why it's more entertaining. I think it's uh, it fits a little bit better as a cash game, and and we it's because it's pot limit. Now you cannot go all in and so on. Like there's, yeah. a, I think that's No Limit Hold'em is a better tournament game. How has Pot Limit Omaha evolved over the last ten years for him? Uh, Craig asked, "How has Pot Limit Omaha specifically evolved for you over the last uh, and evolved in general over the last ten years?" Uh, um, actually, I started to play Pot Limit Omaha when I was really like starting to play poker like it was the preferred cast game in in helsinki in the casino in finland and then it was the hold and was the tournament game um the game has evolved we are we're just adjusting to play with a little bit different strategy just what comes to betting sizes if there's any changes in general i think people used to bet the pot in this game and uh, now people are betting more half pot bets and racing racing less than a pot pre flop. And what everybody's saying, doing the same thing. There's the flop turn and the river, and you get four cards. And and people are boards are changing a lot. There's quite a bit of bluffing, and 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 I don't think there's really too much in this game. It's still. I still think people are not. Um, uh, this game hasn't been like no limit home. It's still like a fairly new game to a lot of people, and and uh, these pot limit Omaha tournaments they're getting now they're getting more popular. There's more players, more, and it's it's an interesting game. It's a it's it's a fun game. There's 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 if you get the big pair aces or kings and you're against two under cards, it's very small chance to win. But in Pot Limit Omaha, somebody has aces and you give the other person four random cards. The, the difference is not so big what comes to having the chances of winning. The, and, uh, this is the reason why you can play more hands also in these games because the hand values are much closer. And, and But yeah, it's an interesting game. It's a... I prefer that as a cash game the most. And then I like cash games. Uh, I actually, I like poker so much that I like to play mixed games. Oh, which is yeah. Like yeah. Many, many different games. Um, it's, it's interesting because uh, there's very few player that knows all the games really well and they have their favorite games, you know, and you're kind of adjusting uh, some players. Some players are strong in some other games and some some are stronger in, in other games and this this is getting more popular in the in the poker industry these kind of mixed games where it can be even like a 10 different games or more mm -hmm. and the game changes every like after one round or or so right it's kind of like a, a hidden part of, of the poker world where you know everybody gets used to seeing on ESPN they see this the same game the Texas Hold'em but in reality I mean there's so many different versions Craig and I were talking about it last night because one of my friends uh, hates playing mixed games. He just hates it. He just, uh, uh, you know, and, and Craig was like, you know, it's it's like PLO is, is like steroids for your no limit hold'em game because it, it really makes you think about uh, the equities, you know, what kind of draws you're having, what kind of blockers that you might have against your opponent. It really makes you, it gives you a fresh perspective, I guess, on maybe you could go back to no limit hold'em and you lose two cards. Um <laughs> 
usually if you if you start to play PLO as a cash game, uh, players prefer to keep playing that. And they ra- rarely go back to hold them, and uh, it's exactly that. There's you can the more more thing to do every card has a meaning you know these blockers like you have one blocker or two blockers and so on and it's it's a fun game but there's a lot of fun games in poker uh, um prefer actually myself all these we call them big bet games like no limit no limit or pot limit games because i there's a little bit more it's more appealing for me that i can I can win the pot with with bluffing, betting when I know my f- opponent doesn't have a big enough hand to call me. And in limit game, you you can that way. You can limit games. You you can just bet a small portion of the pot every time, and uh, it's more like uh, um, apply a different strategy of uh, of of playing your hands. You can bluff, but you cannot bluff so so effectively. Right. This game. Yeah. Um, we're getting towards the end of our webinar today. Um, one of the things we were talking about tournaments a little bit earlier, and you know, we're going to have college players here in a week playing in the fall brawl in the United States and playing against each other to try and win uh, trips, championship belts, and uh, potentially a, a, a coaching session with you. Um, how do you navigate a large field, um, and how do you kind of get settled? in the first few orbits of, of a big tournament. Yeah, they, well, this, you know what, there's a, the secret for big fields and big tournaments is to treat them just like any, any other poker game and tournament. All you can do is just focus on the moment. So you go one hand at a time, one, you know, you don't look ahead. That's all you can do. And uh, you have to be pre- prepared for that. And, and uh, you know it's a large field, but you just, in tournament, it's just a thing that you just, you're trying to stay in the tournament. So you're going level by level. Hopefully your chips are increasing. Sometimes you lose some parts and you can fall to low back. And then you're in the risk of going out and so on. And, and um, But that's all you have to poker just to just to stay in the moment and and do your best in the moment obviously there's a tournament strategy gets involved with the you know you have a lot against bigger stacks and you're, you're applying strategy that you don't want to play a big part at the moment because it's too early to in strategy wise you're risking of going out earlier than than you don't have for a long time with this kind of stack in the you know in some marginal situations and and uh yeah, there's so much about <laughs> regarding poker exactly that, you know, we have a, um, like how the game we have, we have the tournaments are more like that sports, sports part of, of poker that, you know, you go to compete and you get paid based on the position you finish, not, not how many you, chips you had and you have to you're living your chips chips are living in a tournament that are sometimes you have a lot of chips sometimes little and you have to apply different strategies based on that and everybody starts on the same level field so with the same same amount of chips and and um, this situations in 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 poker in tournament poker in cash games it's uh, the learning never ends in this game Right, and learning never ends, and you have to adapt and overcome. Uh, I want to give Craig. Let me hear if Craig has any more questions here for Patrick before we wrap up. No, no more questions. I don't want to take his time up. You can just announce the dates: December fifth and sixth yeah. for the first two East yeah. versus West events, and uh, and then hopefully people will use a flop app and communicate with each other during that period too. Yeah, for sure. So uh, final ta- final table uh, and final table two weeks from today. That's today. That's right. So we're just to to wrap up and give all the information that we want to give. Uh, the fall brawl is December fifth and sixth, but you got to get registered here pretty soon by December third, I believe. Um, yep. Poker Bros. Download the app. Go to worldcollegepoker.com. 
and get registered there for the tournament. Uh, lots of prizes up for grabs there in a big tournament. Uh, again, fifth and sixth, check for your division. Um, and, of course, Patrick's app. Patrick, how can we get the Flop app? How can we get it, and how can we reach out to you and, and follow you on social media? Yeah, um, well, you can get it from the App Store. First Land of Poker. First Land of Poker. Here's our logo, Flop. Um, you get the best from Instagram. And also First Land of Poker has Instagram page, and this is where we are giving our tips out at the moment. And I can talk a little bit. Um, yeah, for me, Instagram, I have Facebook I don't use really anymore. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Pretty, I'm pretty bad at Twitter, very bad. So Instagram <laughs> is the best. Uh, you can always reach me through First Land of Poker. Also, um, if you're... But in, uh, um, so what I was gonna what was the other question? I, I yes, pretty how, much cover, how, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how can we can uh talk to Patrick um yeah app and um uh, Francis and make an account and you can add me add me also and uh you can start sharing for your poker experience and and uh yeah regardless the app actually so we're gonna start having uh, flop partners poker rooms that are using our our solution so you can see all the live games that is going on you can you can uh, create your own game if there are flop partner with um, you can you can create a game and invite your friends to come to play the poker room manager will see the game and accept it if they if they have room you can uh, you can take a seat with our application. You can join the waiting list. You will get notifications with all these things if there's a seat coming to open for you or the poker manager can, manager can contact you through the application, through the chat, or to, through the notification. Uh, what I was going to say, well, we have, we have all the we have news uh, in real time in our application. Well, you can game sessions but uh, the interesting parts we have all these learning learning things coming early next year, january february you will have poker coach you will be able to find our are these new tools that are help you to learn learn more about the theoretical part of of playing up to this uh these learning that you can you can start using um um Uh, let's let's all if we can all start using using uh, flop uh, it's gonna it's gonna help us um, help the help the poker community to all closer to each other and and uh, yeah 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 come together it's a one stop <laughs> shop it's flop first land of poker it's on iOS and Android. Uh, Thank you so much for being with us today, Patrick. We really appreciate your time. And thanks to everybody that's been watching. And uh, we'll see you hopefully on another webinar soon. And we'll see you around, Patrick. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, thanks. And so